Hi guys, it's Aline. It's Wednesday, the 13th of January. I was going to say December. Because <laughs> my brain isn't really where it should be. Uh, I don't know why that is really. I'm a bit tired because I've done a number of things. I also had my friend over for lunch and she and I tend to, when we, you know, when we are, when we have, when we're in a good mood, both of us, we tend to uh, have really intense conversations. A lot of it is about energy work. She knows a lot about that. So I can tell her a lot of stuff and it's, it tends to be, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit, uh, um, it's a bit of work, but it tends to be worth it uh, to large, to a large extent. So for both of us, so um, so that was good. Uh, I am also recovering from just you know the event of the month. <laughs> I don't have to go into any details for you guys. That's still, um, I suppose, what happens is for me when I have my period is that all the stress especially physical uh of the past month the month before that tends to have to come out so i don't have cramps i didn't have to take any painkillers i shouldn't complain really i'm not complaining it's just the fact that i have very low energy and there's another thing so this is going to be a witchy check-in of sorts with the little bits and bobs of what i've been up to and how my Tumo is doing and all that. Um, at the end of the day, it is uh, 4.30 in the afternoon over here. So I've just got, got about half an hour or so before I have to go and prep her food and do housewifely things. And I thought I might as well, uh, you know, just show my face. So I noticed a couple of things that uh, what with my Tumo practice, I have been um, noticing that I'm actually more or less incapable of doing any proper TUMO. Uh, for more information, if you're new here and you don't know what TUMO is, I refer you to my playlists on my channel that have uh, all the explanations that you can want. Um, it's my personal journey with that practice as I discover it, as I go forward, you know, one step at a time. It's, uh, it turns out to be, it's really beneficial, but there's quite a number of challenges as well. And sometimes you just can't do anything. You just have to wait for your body or your energy to catch up with things. And so one example of that was this morning, I had done a proper two more session again. And having gotten up and been, you know, about things a bit, I needed to go to you know, go shopping and stuff. And before I went out, I had sat and had a coffee here and I noticed that I was actually quite, uh, I don't know, I had the shakes like mildly. It was like a slight trembling all over, which I normally associate with being really tired. However, I was full of energy and I was full of feeling really good. So it wasn't that. So this is a subtle form of what is in my brain and what is actually happening in my body not synchronizing, you know? So that's pretty obvious. It wasn't a problem. I wasn't feeling bad or, you know, nauseous or any of it. It was just that I I was looking at how I felt and going like, okay, so this is really weird, really. I have this sensation from this jitteriness which you would the type of sensation that you would tend to associate with having carried boxes for example full of books that may be slightly too heavy for you uh downstairs or upstairs or something like that for a little longer than is comfortable strictly speaking and then after that, you get this reaction from your muscles, a slight sensation of trembling. And the more, the bigger the effort has been compared to how fit you are, the more trembles you get. You know what I mean when I'm explaining it like that. So I felt like that, but I just gotten out of bed. I hadn't done anything other than my tumor. 
So I went like, okay, so maybe I have to reinterpret this. This is how it goes. My process, my whole life is just like this all the time. I have something happens and I have to interpret what, you know, and try to make sense of it all. Don't we all, right? Just here I am just sharing my sense making with you guys. So I kind of felt so, okay, so I've done my tumo. I've done all, I've got all this Shakti energy inside me. I've actually got a lot of Shakti energy. I've worked enormously hard on this area here, uh, heart uh, area and thymus. It's been really beneficial. It also hurts like hell at the first couple of times. Uh, getting Shakti energy, Kundalini energy actually in there, in the areas where it was lacking or had been lacking for 54 years, you know, all that all the time so it is kind of like surgery in a way you know energy surgery so that can be yeah, so yeah it can be tough however since doing that in that phase it's recuperated quite a bit i feel quite good most of the time i'm uh becoming stronger i find strength in new areas you know that have to do with heart and emotion so that's really nice and uh, so I had all this tumo, all the Shakti energy in here, but it wasn't being used. It was just racing around. And I felt like, okay, so that explains to me, at least now, it explains to me why I get this, like this slight, you couldn't see it on in if I hold out my hands like that. It was just, that's the way it felt. It felt like a little sense of trembling, which you would normally associate with being really tired. And in fact, what happens is that there's been a massive energy circulation for a while, whether you were carrying boxes or doing two more or doing something completely different. There's like this massive circulation of energy that's taken over your life, basically, for a, for a while or for a period of time. And um, afterwards, you sort of have to adjust again to either you have to get the energy to actually grab on to a part of you again. Like for me, I went out, I went, did my shopping. I pushed cho a shopping cart around in the, in the supermarket for a bit. You know, I was just basically up and at it for a bit. Nothing extraordinary or nothing specific at all. And half an hour later, I was fine. So the whole sensation of trembling was gone because my energy got implemented. It got attached to me again, instead of just basically circling around for something to do, <laughs> which I think is kind of funny. So yeah, so that was one minor smallish moment where I went like, okay, so this is the situation and I have to do just a little bit of a thinking process in order to you know, figure out what this is doing. And, um, like, I think that happens more often, certainly for me, with energy of whatever type nature, and certainly in terms of healing vibrations or, I don't know, other kinds of vibrational interesting things. You, It's energy always wherever it comes from, whether it's Reiki or out of the earth or angel energy or, or, or totem animal energy or ancestor energy, every time it needs something to grab onto, something to connect with, always, in order for us to be able to integrate it and use it and learn about it and, and so on and so forth. So that was kind of a new-ish type thought. I suppose it's a type of thought that I've been having a couple of times. Uh, certainly considering that what I've been physically doing most of the time, what with all the troubles in the world and things going on, I find that one thing that struck me recently is that I feel a great deal more compassion for people across the ocean than I used to, <laughs> which is like, yay for me, <laughs> because I didn't used to. I used to always, when things like this, you know, whole capital storming business was happening, I used to just go like, please, you know, just 
I can't deal with this. I don't know how to respond to it. I don't know uh, what to say. There's nothing useful I could say. I should, how could I, you know, I, where can you begin even? And now I find that I keep up with the news a lot more because I've got people across the ocean that I actually care about. And I want to know, I want to see whether they're okay. And I want to know what it is that they're dealing with and how exactly things are going for them compared to how things are in my world, in my uh, country. It's different, you know, it's different in every country. And uh, even France, I mean, which is just a couple of hundred K over that way from here. And I used to live in France uh, back in the day when I was a kid. And um, they have got curfews apparently f since a while already and I didn't even know about it. It's just that I've got, uh, I can look up um, a newspaper website for the area that I normally go and visit or that we visited most often, which is Alsace in the northeast of France. It's fairly close from here. It's uh, 600 kilometers drive in a, more or less in a straight line uh, over Belgium and Luxembourg and then east, you know, a bit. I can look up that website and look at it. And I saw that they had uh, actually got a curfew. So uh, closing times, you know, in the evening uh, for people that you're not allowed to be out in the streets uh, beyond, I think, six o'clock in the evening, which is like, oh, oh, my goodness, that's incredible. And they're talking about curfews, um, getting a curfew um, started here in the Netherlands as well, where... There's a lot of resistance and I'm very, quite doubtful if they were, if they're going to manage to get the Dutch people to swallow this because we've been rather good so far, except for a couple of hundred, you know, people who seem to not be able to obey rules and just stick to the protocol and find something else to do. People just have to go out and, go out and party and make a noise, you know. Those, uh, there's a, there's a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand of those, of course, everywhere. And they're here just as well. Otherwise, uh, not that much. Most people, and people I see, certainly people I meet, people my husband or my friend uh, meet, uh, they're all, uh, everybody's, you know, on their best behavior. Actually, has been on their best behavior for a whole year, which is pretty tough you know and I myself I don't uh, I, I have a life in my house you know with all my stuff and my making things and creative stuff and my meditation and my books and my food and my you know being a chef and that kind of thing and I uh, astrology is a big part of my life there's been an astrological adventure which I need to tell you about I just have to think of that to please at some point to remember <laughs> to tell you about it um so i tend to just um not go places i went to town uh, a week or so ago to get some extra shopping which i really wanted and uh you only you're only supposed to go out to town if you uh, have actual urgency so yeah well I, I it wasn't like a case of urgency like needing these supplies but i went to my Asian food store and my Turkish food store to just get a couple of extra things. And it was like the total bare streamlined uh, experience of, uh, of what it normally is, because normally you'd always go have a sandwich and a cup of coffee somewhere and, you know, and go to another type of shop or uh, there's a couple of shops that I go, that I like to go to, to, uh, you know, look at uh, inks and paints and brushes and stuff like that and whatever and all that's closed at the moment it's been closed since um, halfway December so there's no uh, not much shopping there's been a bit more internet shopping uh, going on at our end like with everybody else so I'm with high expectations uh, sitting here waiting for my Mystic Masters tarot that I'm really looking forward to and uh, I should really have checked, uh, I will check later for the, um, the, tra the tracking, uh, the, yeah, see whether there's any news 
so far it should be en route uh, across the ocean uh, somewhere by now. So, um, because it was expediated within the States, the tracking was quite precise and quick. Each day, you know, there was another event where my package was actually transferred to another kind of a, you know, caretaker. So that was really cool. And um, so I'm hoping for that to, uh, to show up pretty... Um, we will see, you know, because it's supposed to be six weeks anyway. So it's fine. It's all completely fine. So I was supposed to talk to you about astrology because that's a really cool and freaky kind of a scene going on here. We discovered we didn't, we did, um, let me see, how can I, how can I explain this properly? We did a little more family tree research for my husband over the past week or so, where it turns out that the there's there's been my my husband is a womb twin survivor i've said this before a couple of times there is a little playlist on my channel that has to do with you know losing twins and things like that in the womb and what that can do to a person it's rather a striking phenomenon that i like to talk about because it's connected to what to what I've experienced myself in different ways and there's avenues of soul loss and soul retrieval that can be explored that are really um, really worth exploring so um, I've a part of the it doesn't have to be necessarily part of uh, I mean soul retrieval processes or regressions and past lives adventures don't necessarily involve your family in the body okay i would say that makes sense you can uh you can have past lives experiences and memories and things that have absolutely nothing to do with your direct relatives in the body right wouldn't you agree huh so um in this case, we went back into my husband's family tree because there's more uh, instances there of brothers dying, twin brother, even a twin brother uh, dying, um, I think it's a month after they were born, a century ago, you know. We found um, another relative who lived for a year and a half, so only an, an, a toddler, really, who has the name that my husband would have had if he'd not been called John, but Jan, which is the Dutch version. This little boy uh, died. Another boy was born a little while later, who was called Jan, who turned out to be my husband's grandfather. He became my husband's actual grandfather. So we looked, when I looked at the chart for this other boy, so the first born kid, right, who only lived to be a year and a half, immediately I had like a sensation of, oh my God, there is something going on here. There's something that connects much more strongly to my husband that I've known for 34 years, so yeah, so I can sort of, you know, <laughs> I can sort of paint a picture of what he's like, <laughs> except we would be here for three days, so I'm not going to do that to you. <laughs> but there's like an enormously strong connection that I could feel in my bones somewhere between my husband and this little guy who passed away. Much more than between my husband and his own actual dad or his own actual grandpa or his own actual great-grandpa. Personal connection, you know, that kind of thing. So I did a birth chart for this little guy and I actually went ahead and spread eagled the whole set of charts for the whole for everybody that I could get a hold of of that family including um 
times of birth even so ascendants and house positions for the people all of it excellent all that i sort of you know googled out of the internet and had that in front of me and my husband came in at some point afterwards and he looked only at the chart for who is who is now his great grandmother so the mother of this little boy who passed away and then later the mother for his actual granddad so her son her her second son there were other kids but these two okay and he went like oh my god i don't want to see her he had an instant and he knows like this much about astrology exactly this much <laughs> this much and maybe some days it's this much and that's about the extent of his uh, involvement with planets and houses and north nodes and all that stuff he just went oh no i don't want to see her so that was weird however it gets weirder bit by bit it gets weirder the, there's a lot of moon positions that connect this little guy's, so the toddler, Jan, huh? his chart, to my husband's chart. I also had the chart for the day this boy died, including the time. And there's like four or five correspondences, which is... Too much, in my opinion, you know. I won't, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail here. The main reason that we got so interested is that this boy passed away in 1887 uh, on the 23rd of March. Which is my husband's birthday, except he was born in 1960 on the 23rd of March. So that, on top of all the other kinds of things, got us to thinking. He's been writing poems about nothing else since that time. Because <laughs> he's all over the place. And it feels more and more as he writes about it, which is really cool. Because in his poetry, he actually gets to explore how it feels. How it really feels. He does that, tends to do that in the middle of the night. And in between things. And he just has these moments of words happening to him and he writes it all down and to me what I've reread his second version of this whole thing that he's been writing it's very obvious that there's some type of a soul retrieval process going on and um, it's so cool <laughs> it's just so cool and so psychic and so full of life it's like there is uh, there's no pain there's only connection and joy and, and beauty. So I thought that was a really neat story. And apparently there's endless second chances in life. And the connection between those two kids is just priceless. And to actually be related to somebody in your own family line that you can connect with in on this level is something else. You know, it's just like, wow. So I can't report anything quite as exotic as that for myself. I um, have been doing a lot of TUMO in here. Like I said, my TUMO experiences in here have been uh, like surgery. It's been uh, moments where it's been really painful. I've also been able to map out the whole structure, which is something I've wanted for a while. The whole structure of the, of the heart area up to here you know and how problematic it really gets in there and i am wearing crystals underneath my pulley here uh, because there's a couple of crystals that i have to really recommend if you're into kundalini any type of kundalini problems i think um lots of crystals get more become more meaningful for us uh, when we are in some type of kundalini yoga-ish or yoga process or kundalini process where shakti energy is coming into us and we 
have to figure out what to do with it. Uh, in particular, I've noticed that I'm my rose quartz that I'm wearing now, uh, a ruby crystal and an emerald crystal. Those three are actually uh, particularly excellent at the moment. They just keep me safe in here because it's wide open. It's still like, it's a bit like a scar after surgery, in fact. So I tend to be, I have to be a bit careful when I talk to people, like my friend was here a couple of hours and she's across the table and she's quite an intense person. I love her to bits. She loves me, I know it. But it's just that it's very sensitive. It's, it's very tender in here. And I need to do a, bit, a lot of regrowing of fluff to in order to, you know, not too much fluff, but enough to <laughs> be able to feel safe. And it depends on how much um, how much I'm really doing. I'm going through an intense process of millimeter by millimeter extracting everything inside me that's basically vibrationally wrong compared to my Shakti. My Shakti energy is supposed to take over the whole joint and it's happening, you know, it's it's fine. And most of the time it's just one big barrel of joy and one big huge, you know, fiery joy. So sunshine, it's excellent. And I've gotten up into here and there's a lot of stuff going on in my ears as well and in my throat area and most of that's not painful at all, it's fine. Uh, and uh, probably I, <laughs> I uh, what's the word? Whatever that word is, you know, I <laughs> can't find the word now. Uh, I don't have to hurt in here anymore because I suffered enough with my tonsils back in the day. It looks like my tonsils are improving as well because uh, obviously six months ago even, I, it's true I still drink a lot of hot water every day and so on and so forth. But um, I, my tonsils are improving. So just keeping at it and then this tumor work definitely improves um, improves the energy supply to all the things, you know. And if it's blocked in here, then it's going to be impossible for things up here to do the work properly. So it's been, uh, all in all, it's been really positive. It's been really... Um, yeah, actually, I suppose most times I can manage best by just being quite sensible about things, making sure that I get my calories on time, that I hydrate, that I get enough sleep, get enough fresh air, crucial, those things. You know, it's just the stupid, plain things. Um, I have more card stuff that I want to share. I have finished my Bertie Tarot project. My box is... Uh, all filled with cards now. Doesn't that look good? Look at that in the um, in the candlelight here. It's all covered in uh, pretty imagery and paints and things. And the Bertie Tarot is in here. I've shown the cards a couple of times. They're all finished now. They're etched and whatever. I have got another parallel little project that I'm uh, still working on. I want to show you a card. Let me show you a card that is actually going to come across more or less because they're upside down here. I just did the backs. So they are finished, but I want to show them to you uh, face, you know, with the camera face down. This is uh, one example. I What I did is this is what I wanted to talk about briefly and I will... Uh, come back to it. This is a Mary Magdalene card. I have talked earlier before, I should say, on and off, not too often, about a meditation that is actually a completely separate activity that has not anything to do with uh, Kundalini or any of it. It's um, what I call an inner lodge meditation. And it's involves f figuring out a location in your mind, a visual visualized pleasant location that you can think of. For me, it tends to be either a potato field or a beach, one of those places, you know. Pleasant weather, no problems, no interference, nothing, just a bit nature, you know. And I sit there and there's a little, for example, a little fireplace or something in front of me, like a 
little hearth and I'm making a circle of people people that in my visualization represent separate parts of myself it's quite a rational exercise I have a part that re represents my emotional life exactly as it is there may be a part that represents an inner child exactly as it is at that moment a part represents mm -hmm. look at that <laughs> uh, represents my intelligence my brain my rational side another part another person or character represents my body and lately since I've started the Tumo there has to be a character a pers person representing Shakti energy for me so those are just a few of those characters and I just sit there with those sides of me there is no energy there that doesn't have anything to do with me present and so no import from outside from other people however any energy that is actually that belongs with me good or bad or whatever you know is welcome so i have no judgment there's absolutely no judgment it's a really liberating beautiful exercise that's why i'm giving it to you here um and these cards that i showed you these uh kinds of cards i've got 16 in all i think or 17 i think it's 17 cards um i have taken them to represent those inner lodge uh people so the parts the parts of myself that i want to be represented by those cards and there's a couple of cards here that can sort of represent whatever you like this is an interesting one it's a six of hearts it's a german i think 15th century or 16th century uh game playing card basically with a dog a, do a jumping dog like that this is a card for me personally that would really uh, suit the inner child energy quite well or it's one of the cards that might apply to that particular energy just as an example so what i did is like for this set as well as for the bertie tarot and for the box that the bertie is living in all these uh like this for example and these gold coins at the top here all that stuff as well as the deck the bertie tarot taroki deck and this stuff i got off the uh collection uh of the british museum website where they have a gazillion images of all the pretty things in the world drawings sculpture uh perfume bottles out of antiquity you name it they have it cartoons playing cards put in type in playing cards and your day is made they have so much great stuff and i loved um f sort of gradually coming up actually i had a couple of images before i realized hey i can use this for an inner lodge card approach so i can set out my um, you know my spread cloth and pick a few of those cards depending on how I feel depending on what I want to do depending on what I want to investigate and set those out use the oracle part of the whole operation here so these these uh, you know these there's a plant there that's a, uh, like a flower kind of a card that has special meaning for me um let me see what else can i show you there's one there's one of obviously that has to do with the whole uh the whole shakti business because this is an indian shakti symbol somehow there's a bit of glue that got there he <laughs> is very shiny now anyway uh i've got um two little Two of those little perfume bottles you won't be able to see but it's a really gorgeous color it won't be showing but i will show this stuff again sometime in the sunshine you know later tomorrow or the day after who knows um 
I had a couple of those, I like half of this portion that I'm here having here now, about eight or so, and I felt like, hey, it would really be possible to use any of these, and they're like random images, nearly random. I selected them because I respond to them in a way, like that card with the dog, with the jumping dog. It just did something inside me. So I am giving you this as a, you know, a new card making trick where whatever comes out is good. I can actually show you this. I have made uh, a printed out a set of miniatures, even tinier ones than these, where I might decide to um, make a booklet, a little booklet with each of these and then just keep that as a kind of an inner lodge tracking log kind of a dealio. There's a picture from alchemy here. There's a picture that has a basilisk. There's a, a, a sort of a tarot card basically out of the old um, 17th century collection. I've got loads of tarot decks. It's, it's awesome. The, the thing that interests me here is that it sort of morphed into a little significant collection as I went along and selected what seems like random images. A theme emerges by itself and you can use that. And you can just print the stuff and turn it into something you can use. Where I am quite sure the manufacturers of the original drawings and the original glass bottles and the beads and the jewelry and the whatever, you know, wouldn't mind in the slightest seeing you recycling for yourself and, and sort of giving, sharing in the significance of the things. Because things do have significance if you let them. So, yeah. <laughs> I think so. I think I have a floating head by now because it's getting darker and darker as I talk here, as I sit here and talk. I'm actually doing rather well, I think. Um, final note, I've got this one. This is an image that I got uh, having done a, I don't know, I think a goddess search of some type. And it's taken me a whole week, I think, to find this image again. And figure out what it was because it doesn't have a, an enormous amount of intelligence on this particular information. I mean, I always say intelligence or intel uh, on this particular drawing, like who made this, when and why is not on there, funnily enough, which is normally what they provide. Uh, however, it is a sketch of a female. I shouldn't hang, hold it in too close because there's no point. It is a fertility type uh, agricultural, um, you know, goddess like Demeter or Ceres or uh, Cybele, you know, one of those goddesses out of the Roman times. And there's a couple more of these drawings that aren't published on the, on the site. A lot of this stuff is not on display. So you can get like a ton of information from this, from this website and um, there's a lot of, I've learned quite a bit. I've learned what I like also. I learned to look at things that I like in different ways for different reasons. I can, it's a miscellaneous bunch of cards and I've got this, this is the last one I'm going to show you. I'm going to try and not show it to you upside down. I think I've shown some of these before, by the way, last week. But I didn't have my inner lodge plan at that point yet. So this is a... You're not going to make any of this out. It has... It's a retablo. It's a Mexican... Uh, like a little altar cabinet with all sorts of little compartments. And a, t a ton of little uh, implements and like little chickens in, out of clay. That are, you know, symbolizing ordinary life. What a good thing to have in an inner lodge meditation. Let me have a separate compartment for my ordinary life, you know, as in not in all this mystical things and all the past lives and all the way. 
typical for me to just be all about those things and forget about, you know, practical aspect. Maybe there. And so the idea then, I hope I made that clear, but maybe I didn't, is to spread out your cards that you've chosen around the outer edge, just like you were doing in your in an inner lodge meditation, and then to pick tarot cards or select or draw tarot cards to go with each position and see what they tell you about yourself and what you know or about your present situation things like that i'm still going to have to try this and see whether it what comes what comes out and um, what i can do with it maybe it's just going to be a whole lot of completely self-evident cards that i completely agree with and i'm fine and <laughs> and i won't have anything to report in which case i will report that I'm uh, seeing that I'm 40 minutes, over 40 minutes in. I actually managed to uh, to talk for a bit in the semi-darkness. It's uh, not completely dark outside yet. And uh, 10 past 5, husband will be here anytime now. So uh, thank you for watching, you people. And I hope you're okay wherever you are. I'm certainly thinking of all of you as, uh, as much as I can. And uh, just, oh, oh dear, all this... All this, all the theatrics. Let's just be done with all the theatrics. Would you agree? Thank you. See you all the best, and, and see you, see you soon. Okay. Ciao for now. Bye.